developed deductive mm -hmm. skills of your own. That's all very nice. Uh <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, <clears throat> to our Success Mastermind for Friday the 3rd of June, 2022. John Lavenia here with you with my Cancun shirt, which I got in Cancun, as, uh, as Lindsay just very correctly and astutely uh, observed. Um, good to be here with y'all. I think we're going to have a few more people tuning in here in just a moment. I do want to welcome our brand new members. Welcome to you. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, no need to be an outsider. You can go ahead and get yourself a free trial membership at jlsuccessmastermind.com. Guaranteed you're going to love it. We got some big enhancements coming to our member site, by the way, for those of you who are members here. <clears throat> Um, we've got a whole searchable thing with every video and like cross-referencing topics and transcribing what was said. It's going to be spectacular. It's been a lot of work over the last month to get that in place. <clears throat> Not work that I've done, uh, work that one of my assistants have done and they are very excited. Actually, they're more excited about it than I am because I haven't even really had a moment to dive into it yet because I've been working on other stuff, uh, but it is Friday. And so it's the final day of the week. Uh, I will announce that we are going to be meeting today for our members at 6 p.m. Eastern U.S. time for our Be Heard end of week free for all. Basically, it's where we talk about whatever you want. And I listen. We can Q&A and we can talk about different things. We did get to hear from one of our new members yesterday who was talking about e-commerce considerations and Amazon and legal and stuff like that. And so we can even get into you know business topics if you want. Um, but that's at 6 p.m. Eastern U.S. time today. <clears throat> also, I will mention there is a huge archive of stuff. So, so if you are inclined towards e-commerce, we've got the huge recorded archive of the e-commerce work groups. If you're into, you know, like more, you know, cerebral kind of, you know, contracting and legal and stuff like that, we've got life and business tools, which also get into the philosophy of, you know, personal development, but still there's more of a business angle on that. We've got practical entrepreneurial tips. We've got the yoga and meditation recordings. We've got so much in this site. And I was thinking about that. And I was thinking about the topic for today, which I'm going to transition to, into right now. And the topic is uh, what people want, <clears throat> which is a question I ask myself all the time. And it's a question that anyone engaged in business, I think you deserve to ask your, yourself all the time. And, and ask others as well, like, what do you want? Now, I'm going to preface this by saying that um, we've, we've had a, a few conversations over the last couple of weeks as it relates to um, uh, vision, right, and, and where people are going in life and where you're going in life and, and, and having that definiteness of purpose, like we talked about yesterday uh, when we quoted uh, a piece of Napoleon Hill's classic, Think and Grow Rich. Uh, but thinking like a marketer, okay, which, which we all are, by the way, okay, so make no mistake about it, no matter what your deliverable is, you're in the business of marketing that deliverable, okay, <clears throat> I see that uh, Ingrid just joined us, one of my favorite people on the planet, and she has skills, you see, uh, one of her skills is uh, violin playing, right, she's an expert, a professional. Okay, well, that's the deliverable, okay, but getting butts in seats for the, you know, for the concert, right? So that's the marketing action. That's what makes it viable. Otherwise, you've got a hobby, okay? So we can all see in any business where that's the case. A, uh, an example that I like to use is, is a plumber, right? So here's something that seems like, you know, here's a, a very observable skill, okay? But is that who you are? Is you're the plumber? Or is that just your deliverable, right? So you get the point. The deliverable is the plumbing services and pipes and all that. <clears throat> the, the actual business or what you more likely want to identify as is the marketer of that. The person who is the purveyor of that into the marketplace. So then back to the original question, what do people want? Well, in the case of you know, the, the, um, the concert goer, they, they want to be entertained with, you know, the beautiful music. In the case of the plumbing customer, they want things when they flush the toilet, they want things to go away, not towards them, but away from them, right? So that is, that is a very desirable thing. Away is the end result that we're looking for. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> 
So then can you ask yourself, what do your ideal customers, what do your ideal customers, your ideal target audience, what do they want? I'll give you an example. Okay. So one of the businesses that I'm involved in has to do with e-commerce shopping clubs and consumer products manufacturing and, um, you know, American made, natural, safe, healthy, green, stuff like that. Okay, great. So, so that's, that's the deliverable, right? Is, is by direct, you know, better, safer products from the manufacturer. Nice. That's, that's nice. Okay, great. But what's in it for me? Asks the customer, asks any customer. Now, attached to this, attached to this, um, you know, opportunity for a customer to involve themselves in, you know, buying uh, wholesale direct from a manufacturer, there's also a referral program, okay, which is the one and only way that the manufacturer uh, acquires market share, okay, is that customers who, who like the service refer other customers. Well, some people do that more deliberately than others because they pay really nice to, for referrals. They're like, yeah, have some money. In fact, have all the money. We'll, we'll happily lose money to acquire a customer because we know once they, you know, they're into it and they, you know, they realize what this is, they're never leaving. Our, our stick rate is out of this friggin' world. I mean, we got customer retention better than any company on the planet. <clears throat> so here, have some money. Okay, well, knowing this, what's one thing? Okay, just giving you an example here. So let's say you were in the referral marketing business. Or maybe that's one of your businesses where you could refer people to a product or service, an affiliate program, um, uh, direct sales, networking, whatever form it takes. Okay, but what's one thing you could do to impinge upon the already existing conversation that's going on in the mind of your ideal target audience? Now, they may or may not be gaga over consumer products or the magic jungle juice or the you know whatever the the item is. Okay, but they do have, well, I can tell you pretty statistically, pretty assuredly, they do have um, a requirement for increased income, more money. What is the statistic right now? Um, and I'm sure it's been fluffed around and whatever in terms of actual uh, to consumer inflation, right? What's it costing people more each month than it did a year, two years ago, just to maintain whatever lifestyle they've maintained up to this point, feeding their family and, you know, keeping the lights on and whatever, right? I heard um, as recently as this morning, it's around $450 a month in terms of US dollars, around $450 a month more is what it costs Mr. and Mrs. America now than it did two years ago. <laughs> now, to us, that may not seem like a big number, Okay, if we're just considering, because we have some very successful people here, right? $400 a month, like, what are we talking about, right? Why bother showing up? Oh, wait a minute. What do they want? Uh, we've seen where a lot of, um, uh, you know, broken homes and, and divorces have occurred uh, over unreconcilable, uh, you know, economic uh, differences or, or problems, right? And it's come down to, and this is even before inflation or ridiculousness and whatever's going on right now, but it's come down to about $500 a month would have changed the whole scene. So that number has come up now a couple of times, all right? So $500. Well, what if you had an opportunity to help people put an extra, I don't know, thousand bucks a month in their pocket? Now you're impinging on a conversation that's already real, that's already happening in the mind of your, your audience, which could be a person, could be a family, could be a group of people on a webinar, one to many, right? Uh, but you're engaging with uh, a conversation, uh, you're entering a conversation that's already happening, that's already real in the mind of the person you're attempting to serve, okay? Now, the product may or may not occur in the moment, may or may not occur as relevant as you know, here's the, the referral side of, of what we're doing here. Here's the, you know, the make money piece of it. But, um, but when you approach any customer in any business with something that they're already predisposed and, and um, pre-motivated to want to participate in, it makes the entire rest of the sales process, okay? It makes the entire remainder of that 
uh, much more of an easy flowing experience. And uh, my intent for everyone here, regardless of what kind of business you're involved in, or even if you're, you're working a job that, um, you know, keeps the lights on while you're getting something else going and, and whatever, right? You're doing the responsible thing. Okay, that's fine. But, but always thinking about how can I best not only serve, but communicate my intent to serve in a way that's relevant for my customer. Let's say, let's go to the job example for a minute. So here you are, you're employed by a corporation. You have managers, uh, you know, people in uh, positions of authority in the corporate structure and whatever. What do they want? It's <clears throat> a great question to ask, right? And, and I mean, you can, you can observe, right? You can also actually ask, right? I mean, it's called surveying the marketplace, right? So your customer in this case is your, your boss. What do they want? Well, <laughs> that could be, you know, obviously more profitability into the company. That could be, you know, them getting their own, you know, lapel pin for having uh, overseen the, you know, the increase in the organizational, you know, profitability or whatever, right? But you got to think like your customer, like what do they want? What's in it for me? Why should I hire you? Or in the case of an entrepreneurial, you know, enterprise, right? Why should I buy your product? What's in it for me? So I'm where I'm going with all this is that while we've talked plenty this week about, um, and probably need to talk about it some more, about you really getting clear about what you want, your definite purpose and, and you know, goals and, and your aim in life, right? That's while that's good and valid and necessary. Otherwise, why, why bother getting out of bed? Uh, we also now must introduce with that same level of understanding that if you can help somebody get where they want to go, they're going to be inclined to cooperate with you and help you get where you want to go. Now, this isn't a new datum, okay? The late Zig Ziglar said, if you help enough other people get what they want, you'll automatically get what you want. That sounds cool. Does it hold water? Yes. Yes, it does. It does. And I think where a lot of people have gone astray is where they uh, allow their attention to be, to be fixated on their, just their own wants and typically on the, the flip side of that. In other words, what they don't already have. So if we're coming from a position of lack, with disappointment, frustration, whatever, that's an introverted state. That's, that's looking in. That's like me, me, me. Okay. And you may not be vocalizing this, but it's an introverted state. How much attention do you have then to put out, to extrovert, to put out onto the people who could actually help you get what you want? You're diminished. You're diminished. So when we go into any, um, not just a, a business conversation, but really with the, with the idea of, of the impression of increase, we go into any conversation, any interaction with anyone, because we don't know who this person or that person is. We meet people all the time, right? You showed up at the, at the store and next thing you know, you met the person and turns out they run the, the company and they're looking for exactly what you got. I, I don't know how all this stuff, I can't account for all this stuff, okay? But I just know it works. But if we go with the impression of increase and that intention to impress people with increase, in other words, to extrovert and to always seek, how can I serve this person and what do they want? Well, we become irresistibly attractive. This is an affirmation you can actually put down. I am, I am irresistibly attractive to my ideal customer. I attract the people into my life who naturally and effortlessly uh, want to buy and, and uh, participate and cooperate in, in some way, right? Depending on whatever business you know, operations and you know, uh, intentions you, you are here to fulfill. Okay, this goes right back to The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles, which hopefully we've all read at least 10,000 times. And if not, do it again, because <laughs> it's, it's so rich. It's so rich, but it's the impression of increase. Waddles said, even if you're just selling a stick of candy to a child at the corner store, right? That kid leaves not only with a stick of candy, but with the impression of increase. Thanks for buying our candy, little Johnny. And he comes back and he gets, he brings his friends and they got their nickels too. And, and more, more increase. Because the kid didn't just get the candy. He also got the validation from the store owner. 
of course, this was all written in 1910, going back to the book. Okay, um, so so nowadays, is that not valid anymore? Like, did people change or something? Not not internally. I'll, I'll tell you what. If if all if all life is about increase and you know moving towards greater and fuller expression and and prosperity and all that. As as is easily provable in nature, right? Just look at the tree, right? It's growing, right? That's that's what it does, right? So life is always about advancement, right? Well, if you're the advancing man or woman, irresistibly attractive. But you can't do that if number one, you're not clear about where you're going, and number two, you're introverting on that you haven't gotten there yet. This is huge, guys, huge. So what do people want? <clears throat> Starting with you, okay. And then, and if you're vague on this, and this is why, this is why um, we can't really remain in the realm of, you know, ambiguity here. You get clear about where you're going, okay? And then you've got the attention available to, because you're already good, right? You're already, you know, you know, that's good. All right. So now you can put your attention outside, just like driving a car. You can drive a whole lot faster when you're extroverted, when your attention is outside of the car, outside of the car, and not introverted on how do I touch the steering wheel and where's the buttons that you're going a lot slower, okay? And you damn well better go a lot slower because you're not looking at where you're going. <laughs> I remember <laughs> when I was learning to ride a motorcycle, I actually said to the instructor, I took a course that was, uh, um, sponsored by Harley Davidson. And then of course I bought the Harley Davidson, but the, uh, I said to the instructor, I want to, I want to uh, know this machine to the point where it's like a part of my body. He's like, that's exactly it. That's exactly right. Because when you're out on the street, you are responsible for everyone's driving. I'm like, what? I'm responsible for everybody. He's like, yes, you're responsible for everybody. Now that sounds like, I mean, that's, is that, is that even possible? I've got to be responsible for, for him. The, the, the guy over there, he's like, well, um, he makes a mistake and you didn't, you know, assess in advance and, and predict and whatever. You're dead. You're dead, man. So you're responsible for everybody's driving. Now, can you, can you take on that responsibility while fiddling around trying to figure out how your machinery works. No, and that's why you train. <clears throat> are you willing, using that as a metaphor, are you willing and able to take responsibility for what other people want? Heavy trip, I know, heavy trip, but I'll tell you what, if you, if you grasp that and if you embrace that to some degree, to a greater degree than, than your competitors do, you're gonna be irresistibly attractive to them. And if there's a strength, and I'm just looking around the room, we got some very powerful people here, okay? Uh, if there's a strength that I could cite for many of you, it's that you can get focused. You can get focused on how can I serve this person? Let me really listen to them. And let me, with, with persistence, like we talked about yesterday, and with tenacity, let me go after delivering that benefit, that value that I know I can deliver to them, despite their resistances, their skepticisms, their, um, you know, whatever assumptions they, they may have, let me show up as, as that person of, of relaxed confidence and, and of service to the point where they convince themselves that cooperating with me is the right thing for them to do. And look, I've seen uh, some of you have your best months ever in various businesses, simply because you got focused, you stopped diluting yourself, you stopped introverting, and you just served. I'll end with this, and it's the QQS formula that Napoleon Hill talked about in Think and Grow Rich, in the chapter on organized planning, he said your income, you can, you can gauge based on this formula, which is the quality, quantity, and spirit of the service you render. 
quality, quantity, and spirit, QQS, right? <clears throat> so, so back to the idea of what do people want, all right? Do you deliver what they want in a higher quality, a higher quality version of that than they can get elsewhere? Okay. And if not, then figure out, you know, where, where you can create those advantages for increased benefit to whoever you're attempting to serve, higher quality. Number two, and this is where a lot of people fall down, quantity. Are you delivering a higher quantity of that to the people you intend to serve? Now, for a lot of, of us, this just comes down to, to, to marketing, right? I mean, to, to impinging on the public, to making known that which needs to be known, right? We've got people here who are engaged, for example, in, um, in e-commerce, right? Here's, here's, our, here's our wares on Amazon, Etsy, Shopify, whatever. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, are they being made known in the marketplace? Uh, so increased quantity of promotion, of outflow, of publicity, right? Brings in what? A increased inflow of attention, awareness, money, right? Transactions, all right? So the, the quantity factor uh, for most of us must be augmented, okay? Um, especially if you know you've got quality, well, now it's your moral obligation to put it out there, right? Uh, otherwise, you're sitting there like the plumber playing with his pipes, man. You got a hobby. No, we got to get the pipes into other people's houses. All right. And then ask for the spirit of the service that you provide. So, and, and that may sound a bit more ambiguous, am, ambiguous, but the, the idea that you can know what other people want, that that is a knowable thing, and that you can, with intention on that, on delivering that, you could do the other two things, like delivering quality and a high quantity. <clears throat> that gives you the opportunity to be, as we've often talked about, unattached. Unattached. So that the moment that someone confronts you in the marketplace, your product, your service, your offer, you as a, as a, uh, a being, as a, a personality, as, as someone who they could choose to participate with, um, they, know, they instantly know this is a person who, who is hook, line, and sinker about serving, right? The impression of increase, the advancing man or woman. I know instantly who I'm talking to. It's a completely different experience than the rat looking for cheese, right? Trying to get so attached, so friggin' desperate, like my chihuahua who shakes when he wants to treat, right? So, so no, not, none of that, none of that, okay? Cool as a cucumber, moving at warp speed, but cool as a cucumber. That's the spirit with which you could provide service when you know not only where you're going, but what others want. I hope you got some ideas out of this. Uh, because, uh, look, uh, we, we got a lot of people here who are, are really close to, to big, you know, uh, additional advancements in business and in, and in life. Okay. And if you, and if you uh, find yourself, you know, a little bit stagnant or stopped or plateaued, take a look at that. Take a look at the quality, quantity, and spirit of the service that you provide. Okay. And see how you can augment each of them. And, uh, and really listen, really listen to people because it's so revealing. I've been, I've been credited with being uh, an excellent salesperson. And I will tell you that the only reason that, that I could do any of that is because I listen. It may sound too simple, okay? But I really hear people, not just the words. I really hear people. And granted, you know, I've been working on that for a few decades, right? So, so, but it doesn't have to take decades, okay? Just be very deliberate about it, finding out what people want, and then how can you deliver it to them in a way that really nobody else has that exact combination of skills, talents, intentions, um, you know, the, the things that you can uniquely provide in a marketplace. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this. I do see Catherine's here, Daisy, Edward, Ingrid, Lindsay, Lynn, and Mandy. 
Good to see you, Mandy. Mandy, I got that um, Books for Britain posted. Thank you so much. I don't know which chapter, so I just, I wrote two chapters on there. I, you know, we'll figure out which chapters those were. But um, who's got some thoughts about what people want? <clears throat> As it relates to your own experience, as it relates to your own business, and we got a variety of businesses represented here today, <clears throat> or as it relates to to relationships, right? Uh, you know, we got parents here, kids; they want stuff. Hey, Lynn, what's your story? Oh, I just had a when you were talking, and, and you were talking about what people want, and essentially, it comes down to I think what we all want when we go and buy something that's not, you know, like essential. Mm -hmm. it in some way or another it has to reflect who we think we are mm -hmm. so i go and i buy it even something like buying a book but it's sort of like buying a painting or paint for your house if you're going to paint a room it kind of says well i'm a, a hip person or a cool person or a you know mm -hmm. um and obviously you know like mugs and uh, you'll get somebody who's like really ironic or who wants to be rude or who wants to be like, you know, very in the moment. I've just mm -hmm. bought one. <laughs> I just put that in the lecture here in Australia and I've just bought a brilliant one and ordered another one about our new prime minister because that just spot on, you know, really spoke to me. I'm a political nerd. Okay. Um, you know, despite the fact that I could have made one myself, it's like yeah. these ones were just perfect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, you know, I'm not, um, I'm not above falling for that myself. And it's like, so it's kind of like thinking about all these other, other individuals and how people see themselves and kind of looking that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, right. Well, uh, I'm nope. sorry, we got a little background noise there. You got an animal? Who's got an animal? That's a dog here. Sorry, that's Mitzi. Oh, I'd love to. Please, please show us. All right, hold on. Tell me that. I mean, it's Friday after all. We gotta have a dog show or something. <laughs> there we go. Have a biscuit. There he is. There she is. Say hello. Oh, what there. a beauty! Yeah. Is that a no. is that a full full blood blood cocker spaniel? Is that what that is? Oh, that both are. Yeah. Right. Do they get yes. do they get a little bit of ear? Uh, they need their ears. I'm really in. I'm really lucky. Touch wood. Right. They have so far, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Knock the wood. Very good. Very good. My wife just took our uh, one of our dogs to the vet who's having ear irritations. Uh, it's not a cocker spaniel, some sort of pointer, hound, mutt, something. Yeah, else. anything with the ear. Yeah. Is is likely. <sighs> all right. Good times. Thank you. So so glad you're here, Lynn. All the way from Australia. It's the middle of the night, and yet here you are. So it's uh, like midnight here. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Hey, I see. Uh, I see our Canadian friend and violinist Ingrid, and then I think Catherine's got a hot mic. Hey, Ingrid, man, it's good to see you. Hi there, good to see you too. Mm -hmm. Um, so for the question about what do people want, so I consider myself pretty lucky because what not the violin, but the other, the Beamer stuff, mm -hmm. um, people want health. And if there's anything that's been shown to us in the last couple of years with the COVID thing, a lot of the, uh, a lot of people have realized that the mainstream, if you want, way is failing us in many regards. So for me, that's been actually a blessing because people are looking for other solutions that are doable, viable, and I guess the question is, for me, I always ask someone, if you didn't do something about whatever it is is bothering you, how would that actually change your life? And if they get emotional about that, then that's a mm. thing that I know is important. And if they go, eh, you know, I'm fine. I just won't buy the other boat. Then uh, I know that they're not, their <laughs> want isn't maybe enough. Right. So it's an important question. What do people want and how much do they want it? Sure. Sure. I, Ingrid, I just had a conversation with a, a guy who's like a, a manager of many, many you know, people throughout a region and uh, in the consumer product space. And um, we were talking about what motivates people to have um, 
to commit, right? To, to commit to their health, as you're saying, right? I mean, you're, you have a product which is not inexpensive, okay? It, you don't have to mortgage your house either, but, but it's, it's not an insignificant purchase. Um, and, so, and so how bad do they want it? That, that's a, a great question. Now, you're saying that you're assessing that in, in advance. You're, you're figuring out what they want in advance by, you know, well, you know, what, what would happen if you didn't address this? Right. Or we could we could ask a, a variety of questions like that in the business space, like in, with with, you know, coaching entrepreneurs and stuff. OK, what's the you know, what's the default future look like? I mean, if we don't do this. Five years from now, um, what's the default? Like, where are we going to end up if we don't do this? So so there's clarity in contrast. Right. And if we can, um, I guess, in some ways, rub salt in the wound. Right. If we know that there's a wound, if we could say, look, this is real. Do you feel it now? You feel it. Right. Are you willing to do something about it? Uh, then we can, I think, uh, abbreviate the amount of time it takes for people to make a, a resourceful decision. Because like Lynn was talking about, people don't just necessarily buy what they what they need. They, they buy what they want. Lynn wanted the, the messaging on the cup even though Lynn is very able to engage in being the producer and purveyor of cups, right? She decided to be the consumer in that moment. Uh, Lynn, you should probably rip off the, you know, and just go ahead and, and, you know, personalize that a little bit and get it out there. I mean, if it's that good. Um, and I don't know, I don't know the, the entirety of what you bought, but, uh, but if it's, if it's got, you know, market value in present time, I'm sure there's lots of versions of it out there, right? Well, how about your version? But, but the point is, <clears throat> like what, uh, what Ingrid was saying, is that um, you, you, can, you can drill down a bit more and kind of um, take people's temperature to see, you know, if, if they're going to engage or if it's even important enough for them. Uh, the other interesting thing about that, Ingrid, and I'm sure you've seen this, is that, is that personal timing right? This may have been, you know, low on my priority list now, but next week, next month, oh, now, holy crap, I can't live without it. So that's where like the persistence we were talking about yesterday, where that can come in, because it's a new day. It's a new reality. Timing is everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you. Awesome stuff. Thank you, Ingrid. Hey, let's get Catherine out here. You got your cat, Catherine? I locked him out of the room. He kept attacking oh, my feet. Good for you. Good for you. Right. Now, I liked what you were saying, though, earlier about um, helping other people reaching their goals as well. That's mm -hmm. something I've been really trying to concentrate on lately and learning how to do that. And like right now, I've got a customer that I'm trying to bring on um, with one of my businesses. And one of the things I'm trying to do is I'm promoting her business as well to give her a little bit of extra funds. Mm -hmm. But then I'm also using that as a way to reach out to other people that might want to come on board as well. Right. Oh, that's the impression of increase right there. What does she want? She wants yeah. to grow her existing enterprise. Exactly. And so, right. So you're showing up as an ally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm interested in helping you do that. <clears throat> and I've got, you know, alternative things that we can do too, right? We can, we can do this, right? Because this is working. And who, who are you going to meet in the process of like networking that? And I mean, I don't know, right? So... Wow. Good stuff. Thank you, Catherine. Brilliant. See, Catherine's brilliant. She knows stuff, guys. She knows stuff. I'm learning from the best. Oh, well, there, <laughs> there you go. I wasn't going to say it, but you just did. So uh, there's that. Uh, <laughs> you know, I've had people and, and Catherine, I think you, you've met one of them. We were together in Salt Lake City. Yes, you did meet one of them. Uh, someone had, had contacted me to pitch me their, their offer, which I was very interested in hearing. So, so whereas uh, we could say this person has, let's say a competing offer to, to what I have, I'm all ears, please, please sell me your stuff, right? And then uh, what wound up happening is just in the conversation, because I was listening and I was engaged, I could say, well, how does it compare to, to you know, this thing, which you know, we've got over here, and they're like, oh, well, actually, that's, um, you know, that, that's better. Um, yeah. And they wound up switching. So bring your sales pitch, right? And, and look, I'm, I'm happy to, to entertain any, you know, your ideas, right? 
Because what I found was that what this person really wanted, back to the original topic, what do they really want? They wanted to be successful in growing a business in this, in this space, in this industry. And uh, simply by, by listening to what they really wanted, I was able to show them the advantages of taking a, a little bit of a different approach, right? And now they're like, wow, I am so glad I called John. <clears throat> Not just because I listened to them, but uh, perhaps I saved them years of heartache. Not perhaps, I did. I saved them years, <laughs> years of heartache. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Any other thoughts on this, on what people want and how you can, you know, really get in communication with them about that? Any other thoughts? Last call. Any thoughts? No thoughts? Okay. Then what we'll do is we'll end off on that. We'll get together at 6 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. I am actually, just so you guys know, I am taking my daughter and wife to a local uh, Tampa Bay, uh, park, right. Little wildlife area. And we're going to see about, um, about catching some crabs, uh, which is something I haven't done since I was a child growing up in New Jersey. We'd go out in the, in the Bay, in that case, Barnegat Bay in New Jersey. And we'd put like chicken on a string and we get the net and the crabs come and we get the fresh crabs. We're going to see about doing that here in, in, in Florida. And, and um, I told my wife, if we get crabs, you're cooking them, right? You want to cook the crabs? I want to cook. The All right. All right. As long as you're in on this, I'm not cooking the crabs. I mean, we'll, we'll see about getting some crabs, but. All right. So if you guys like fresh. Fine. Yeah. Lindsay, you've got an opinion fine. about this. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Zen <laughs> caught a starfish too while we were there. I was like, "Okay, we didn't." Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Got it, got it. All right. Well, I haven't done it in decades, and, and they so, hurt and they pinch you. <laughs> well, you got to know these are, these are blue claws, right? So yeah. you got to grab them by the the rear fin leg thing, right? This way they can't reach, they can't get you, right? At well, least we that's were, my. We mm -hmm. do it at night, so it's mine. <laughs> When my kids were, well, they were smaller then. We had this bucket of crabs. It was just like, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Wow. Okay. So, but you guys are like, you live in, in like the environment where that happens all the time, right? I just got here from the desert. So I'm like, yeah. It's, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, okay. Your daughter's going to love it. She's going to have a blast. Good. Good. We're going we're gonna to do that. And uh, I see your, your text here, Ingrid. Put them in the freezer 15 minutes before you throw them in the pot. Okay. Good, good tip. Keep that in mind. All right, guys, I'll see you at six o'clock with or without crabs. Okay. So have a great afternoon. <laughs>